Hmm. Two pawns. A lot of possibilities. Somebody slapped me for that. A little break before we get into the start of Series 6 proper. Space and time. Two shorts that had basically form one coherent story. They were part of, uh, it was Comic Relief, or it was Red Nose Day contributing to Comic Relief, that sort of thing. And that's worth specifying because Doctor Who has done specials for that as well as Children in Need. And it's important to recognize which are which because I wanted to be certain to go back and double check this because after watching I'm like, I hope that wasn't a Children in Need special, because if it was, that would have been part of my assessment, because I would have gone, ah, uh, not exactly kid, <clears throat> super friendly. Um, that said, I, it's weird, I feel like whenever I hear this little story, and I'm going to refer to it as one thing, even though it's two halves, whenever I hear this talk about, it always seems to be fairly derisively. And maybe it just happens to click with my sense of humor. I actually, I have a lot of fun with this thing. It's like, it's fluff. It, it is very clear from the get-go that it is fluff. So th there's not a lot of weight to be put on it. So there's this whole thing of the doctor, you know, working on the TARDIS and Rory's helping and I, I first of all I kind of like that I kind of like the idea that Rory's trying to be helpful and um there is a distraction that causes Rory to drop something and then things go very very wrong now uh, I mentioned uh, that this would have been fairly inappropriate if this had been on Children in Need and that starts right off the bat with the distraction the reason Rory got distracted is because he's working down below underneath the glass floor and Amy was standing above him in a very short skirt. And I suspect jokes like that are maybe part of why there's some derision towards this particular one-off. I, for my part, I don't find it particularly egregious. I mean, take that, you know, for whatever you feel it's worth coming from me versus, you know, from other people. But I... For me, amongst other things, it's incredibly consistent with the characterization of Amy and the nature of Amy and Rory's relationship. And it doesn't feel like things have been twisted out of character. It does feel to a certain extent like this is the kind of moment that maybe we wouldn't normally get. Not just because it, you know, it wouldn't move the plot along, but also because it is a little bit more risque. This, the, some of the notes in this overall, and maybe being part of Comic Relief, they felt they could get away with that more. But it doesn't feel inconsistent with the characters or what I would imagine their lives in the TARDIS would be like. It's just the kind of thing we don't normally see. So when Rory drops whatever it is, suddenly the TARDIS materializes inside of the TARDIS. And so inside the console room is a TARDIS. And if they go through the doors, they come in the door of the TARDIS and they are theoretically possibly stuck there forever. And that gets us into this wonderful little bit of time loop and uh, paradox stuff, which Obviously, Moffat likes to play with and he likes to toy with this sort of intertwining of time and doing things that don't make a ton of sense. I mean, that's a big part of what Blink is. That was a big part of the payoff ad in The Big Bang. He enjoys doing this sort of stuff. And I actually really like that he did it in something light and fluffy like this and created a situation where something's gone wrong with the TARDIS to basically justify a paradox happening because normally paradox is not supposed to be a thing that can happen. Uh, so, you know, having it just be linked to the fact that something is very wrong here, uh, that works well for me. And I, again, you know, maybe it's something that, that throws people off, but, you know, Amy flirting with herself. Again, speaking personally, I buy that. You know, when a slightly future version of Amy comes through the door and suddenly there's two Amys in the room, um... First of all, I've, again, I think it it's all, again, I find it all very consistent with Amy as a character that she has this kind of double standard that she will flirt with herself, but like she'll smack Rory for entertaining the notion of two Amys. 
Uh, so, you know, that kind of double standard, that's, yeah, that's kind of her, that there is an inherent power imbalance with her relationship with Rory. There always has been. That was there from the get-go. And just given what we know about Amy, and, you know, and what her life has been like, and yeah, no, I would totally buy that she would see herself and basically go, ooh, hello. Uh, between, you know, her, her own feelings about herself, and she, she seems like just a very open-minded person. So, like, I can go with that. And just, like I said, overall, I find this thing just fun. It moves at a, at a good pace. It keeps the jokes coming. So even if a joke doesn't land especially well, there's another one coming in a little bit. Maybe that one will work better for you. And, like, I see rather frequently an awful lot of criticisms about Moffat's handling of female characters. And my, I don't know if I'll ever dedicate a video to that, but my own general assessment is he relies on similar patterns and templates much more than he should. But speaking personally, I, I usually in the context that they appear, enjoy a pretty decent... I enjoy his female characters more often than I don't. Um, like, I still enjoy coupling. <laughs> you know, when it's... Is it a reductive view of sexual dynamics? Well, yeah, for both men and women. But within the context of what it's doing, I find it entertaining. And I find that the case for a lot of Moffat's... Um, female characterizations, even the ones that I see him get criticized for. I will grant, though, that he he leans on certain things a little bit more than he should in terms of certain uh, archetypes. And he seems to have a much wider variety of, of male character templates than he does female ones. But I've kind of gone off on a tangent. Maybe I'm just trying to fill time because... Like I said, I, I feel like people talk about this derisively, and I just have fun with it. I just enjoy it. About the only thing that I can say about it that annoys me is, and there was no way around this. They weren't going to come up with a, well, there was a way around it, but there was only so much they could do, is the music. Because they obviously weren't going to create music specifically for this. Um, but they use, like, especially at the end, the tail end of... I am the doctor, you know, the dun, 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 dun. It's like, you know, it's this big bombastic and it's like, but we just ended this weird, quirky little jaunt of an episode. Why, why are the horns blaring? Dun, 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 dun. I'm like, what, huh? What? Stop. So, you know, that doesn't work. But that, for me, that's about the only thing that doesn't really work for me. And I mean, I like, I'm biased. I'm going to be biased in this thing's favor. I love this team. I love this trio. I love Matt Smith's Doctor, Amy Pond, and Rory Williams. Those three together, I think, are a fantastic trio. They have a great dynamic with each other. Every element, and all of the connections, I think, are great. Amy with Rory, Amy with the Doctor, the Doctor with Rory, the Doctor with Amy, like everybody, everybody's relationships, all the connections, they are all terrific, and I love them. And so I enjoy this. Space and time. You rewatched it lately? Whatever your thoughts are on it, drop something down in the comments, let's talk about it. There's a whole bunch of stuff to do as well. If you like what I do, maybe uh, consider supporting me on Patreon. That would be a massive help. There's a link for that down in the description. But uh, even if you don't want to do that, you can still help me out anyways by commenting, liking, subscribing, sharing the video, all things which assist in appeasing the algorithm. Because if we do not, it will destroy us all. But uh, you don't have to. I got a little hyperbolic there, but at the end of the day, look, you're the council. I'm just running the meetings. Until next time, this council is adjourned.